original, still the best, now for more than 12 years. This is Radio Free Cybertron, hosted by Brian Kilby, with J.D. Church, John DeLuna, XV, Amy Morgan, Peter Van, and Rob Clay. For the latest Transformers news, visit tformers.com. This is Radio Free Cybertron for September 20th, 2012. Hey, we have the original cast back. Minus uh, yeah. Rob Springer. Yay. Oh, like, so, uh, mostly. Mostly. Yeah, he ain't coming back. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe he can, like... Uh, he'll come back someday, just not today. Yeah. So, uh, we have John DeLuna, XV, JD Church, and I, and Brian Gilby. So, um... You have to remember that Rob Springer is always with us in spirit. That's why he's still doing RTM1 for us. Yes. Yeah. Um, True. Yes. Yes. Uh, Rob Clay is sick. Yeah, it's the first time Rob's not been on. I can't remember the last time Rob's not been I on the show. I think it's the first time he's not been on since we made him a regular. Yeah. We miss Rob. Yeah, so nice it's been a while. Hey, uh, so we actually haven't officially announced it on the show. Um, so Peter is no longer doing the tformers.com news desk. He is retiring, and uh, that's been handed over to JD and XV. Sorry. Peter. Or really, yeah, or really XV and... Really, yeah, it's really actually because I was <laughs> I was there before. Yes. So Peter, um, yeah, Peter is starting a new job, kind of like John did. So he is uh, unavailable for most things. He's still doing Screen View, and you should uh, check that out at uh, TMRD.net. Doing his own show, but no, <sighs> man. Are we uh, doing a new sound wave this week, John? Yes. Yeah, we'll talk uh, Fall of G Four, and then um, well, oh, Mortal Monday. Yes. We're it Mortal was Monday. more. I was right last week. It was the anniversary of Mortal Monday, nineteen freaking years. Sure was. God damn. Yeah, I know. It just sucks. Damn. Okay, so uh, on the show this week we have uh, comic news with Amy Morgan. Uh, we also have uh, Rescue Bots this week. It's Rescue Bots review. Uh, this week it's the alien invasion of Griffin Rock, and uh, we have uh, Transformers Rewind. Uh, this week it is Dark designs so a uh, pretty packed show <clears throat> let's go ahead go ahead and uh, jump to the tformers.com news desk we will be back in just a few minutes i am so sorry Tformers.com news desk bringing you the best of this week's news. I'm XB. And I'm JD. Good yep. timing. Yay! <laughs> so this week in the news, uh, the final part of the eHobby Shutter Glass Versus set has been revealed. Uh, SolarBot is a white, gold, and clear yellow recolor rewind and represents another stab at coming up with toys based on the most obscure bits of Transformers trivia. Uh, the whole set can be pre-ordered via the Transformers Collectors Club for about $200 through October 15th. <laughs> now, so, what is this? So, JD, do you have any idea what this is referencing? Not a clue. Okay, th this, is, this is either really cool or really frightening, depending how you want to look at it. Okay. Uh, remember the, you remember the G2 GoBots, right? Sort of. Yeah, you know, the little Hot Wheels size guys. Right. Okay. So when they were doing the packaging mock-ups for those before they were before they were released, um, on the front there was a call-out for a mail-away SolarBot toy. But since only the fronts were mocked up, nobody ever saw what the SolarBot thing was supposed to look like. So it only really exists as a name and vague concept. So now through eHobby, that name and vague concept has been given a form. Of a cassette. With a lot of clear plastic. That's going to be good and durable. Yeah, um, you know, I'm kind of looking at this again, and it's like, um, yeah, that is yeah. break-tastic. Of course, you know, after they did Stripes for one of the recent reissue sets, which was based off an early draft of Transformers movie script, you know, they had to do something to dig a little deeper and out-obscure the obscure they've already obscured. Right. 
Right. So, I mean, I, I can see where they're coming from with this. It's just like, oh, so after 20 years, that's what it actually is. Huh. Yeah, it's it, it, totally not any of the things I would have thought of, you know, because it definitely had that look of like, you know, like Zarin from the comic or something, like the Primus Possessed. Right. So. Yeah. Odd. So does does this reveal make you feel any more inclined to purchase this set now? I mean, I wanted it before, and I, I like the set. I just, I mean, I obviously, I mean, well, I can't afford it right now. But, um, you know, if I had the cash to throw down, yeah, I would be buying it, but not because of this. Right. So. Okay, um, a corporate presentation document has revealed details about the Beast Hunters trademark filed recently. Uh, Beast Hunters will be a line refresh title starting with the third season of Transformers Prime. While we don't know for certain what entirely this is going to involve, it's probably safe to guess more animal form Transformers will be part of it. It's also currently rumored season three of Transformers Prime will total only 16 episodes based on statements from Jeffrey Combs at El Paso Comic Con this past weekend. Okay. Cool. Beasts. That's sure a thing. That's a, that's a one way to go. Well, I mean, we've had cars for a while, so... Yeah, I guess it's about maybe, time. Maybe the other thing will work again. Cycle back around. Does this mean we'll get a Predaking? That would be great, wouldn't it? That would be kind of cool. I would go for that. All, although, watch, Predaking would just be, you know, the Fall of Cybertron Comedicons recolored again. Except, you know, with animal head. Yeah, with animal <laughs> That would be so true. So true. That would be hilarious. Uh. What's, I mean, it's more interesting, though, the rumor about the third season being shorter. Yeah, well, I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how well, I mean, it's like, is that one of those things where it's like they're just trying, they may be going in a whole different direction, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, one theory that's been tossed around is that uh, the Hasbro people have gone on record saying that they put down for 26 episodes per season to start with to spread the costs out more. Mm -hmm. But now that everything is kind of set up and in place, they're going to tighten back and do normal sized seasons for a CGI show. Um, and the 16 episodes could be a 13 episode regular season with like a three part movie ish intro thing. That would make sense. Kind of like, uh, the, 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 uh, what they call the five part intro for Transformers Prime, I can't remember the title. Oh, um, pleh. something of darkness. Some darkness, darkness of the, 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 the darkness fall thing. of the rising darkness. The man, my brain is filled with their stuff. This is so sad. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway. But it was something dark, and there was five parts to it, and it started Transformers Prime. I'm I'm sure you guys out there listening know what we're talking no, about. I know they're screaming at us right now. Don is yelling at the top of his lungs. Oh well. So yeah. Cool. No, um, if if they can bring some animal transformers into it more, I mean they're starting to with like Thundertron, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and Arachnids, sort of. If I mean, you that's squint, a little more of a, mm, that, turn your a head. It's a little more of a stretch, but I mean the intent is kind of there. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we'll see what they do. I mean, they've spent so much time. It's it, it's just like that beginning of the Beast era. They'd spent so much time making vehicles when they first started making animals again. They were kind of weird. And then they got really good at it. And then they started trying to make vehicles, and they sucked for a while. So it's kind of like, I think you just need to expect that if they're going to go to animals, they're going to kind of suck for a while until they yeah. figure out how to do it again. But I mean, you could have some promise. I'm kind of looking forward to see what will come out of this merchandise-wise. Hey, it could be something different. There's something well, crazy. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really what I'm looking at for this. It's like, okay... Let's have a thing that's not a box on four wheels. Not just that. Like, different characters. Oh, Something no, crazy, happen. like new characters. That's never going to happen. No? No? No. Oh, man. No. Drat. Uh, so, J.D., do you remember the uh, Reflector team set Perfect Effect made a while back? Do I? Yeah, I do. Okay. 
Um, well, a new release with some recoloring and remolding is coming out soon, and Perfect Effect has just revealed that by pre-ordering from Robot Kingdom before September 30th, you can also get a bonus miniature camera mode accessory, which can be used by Masterpiece figures or most others with 5mm post hands. Of course, all customers who already have placed pre-orders for the set with Robot Kingdom will also receive the accessory camera. I gotta say, that looks kind of neat with Masterpiece Skywarp. Yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah, that does look really, I mean, it, what's amazing is you see the size with it with uh, Starscream and with the Skywarp, and they both look good. <laughs> like, well, with the Starscream, it looks more like, you know, a steady cam rig, but. Yeah, but still, it's like, <laughs> it's not bad, but definitely with the Skywarp. In fact, I'm almost like, I should get the set just to get that to go with my Skywarp, because that would be, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh no okay. fortunately you have a wife to substitute for your own self-control problem she's like my external like conscious uh, you know when it comes yeah. to like buying things but uh you know the five millimeter you know. post attachment it, i mean it's a good thing to do for the maximum compatibility but i'd really like to see that with a figure that has like the open sculpted hands Mm -hmm. I think it's a little more natural that way. Uh, the Straxus mold in particular has had some of the best hand design I can remember on any small size figure. Yeah. Uh, I think something like that, it would really look really good with that, even with the kind of exaggerated size. But I mean, that's definitely, it's definitely intended for the masterpiece figures to recreate the part from more than meets the eye where Thundercracker takes pictures of the whatever thing is they're about to raise to the ground. Oh yeah, 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 and and hey, Thundercracker masterpiece is like you know, out. So mm -hmm. that's if you can find it. Cool, if you can find it. I couldn't. Yeah. This weekend. Sorry. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> I'm just saying it's out there somewhere. It yeah somewhere at some Toys R Us if you actually have one of those. Some of us don't. Aww. Na 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 na. All right. Instead, I have a Kmart. <clears throat> Dang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so finally this week, Prime Voyager's Thundertron and Ultra Magnus have reached retail in Hong Kong. Uh, usually this means you can expect to see the toys reach the U.S. around a month later. Uh, Hobby Base has posted a few, in few images of each toy out of package taken at their store. And you can find additional close-up looks at both toys at T-Formers from the Hong Kong Transformer Club's galleries. So this is only in Hong Kong? They're only out in Hong Kong right now. Ah, oh, fooey. Well, they'll be coming soon enough. Dude. I mean, right now, let's Dude. focus on finding, say, Dreadwing at retail. <laughs> Hong Kong fooey? Okay. <clears throat> no? There's okay. a reason I was ignoring that, JD. Dang it. No, I don't know about this Ultra Magnus, though. I've got the small one. I've got the... Um, I got the, the small one's stuck. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure the bigger one looks any better. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm kind of like, well, I don't know if that looks like an improvement over the hmm, small one. Hmm. Well, at least it's not a white Optimus Prime. Hey, it is a completely different mold than Optimus. So it does have that going for it uh, yes, for it sure. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Hasbro finally seems to have broken out of the white Optimus Prime line of thought. Because... Even the Generations Ultra Magnus that's coming up in 2013 is a blue Optimus Prime with a new head. Yeah. So. so but mean, that looks that they're, looks they're, pretty they're, different, and, you know. It's amazing oh yeah, it what does. a different head sculpt and and a different paint app on that really does. It's, you it's, know. So. Uh, Thundertron, I'm kind of interested in getting though. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, I mean, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, you know, it's different. It's a different thing. It's a different character. It's one of the few new characters that we get nowadays. Yeah. I mean, that like almost... Everything's an Optimus Prime, a Bumblebee, or a Starscream. I mean, even Bulkhead is a recycled character. I mean, it's just like there's... You know, basically we got... Out of Prime, we sort of got... I wouldn't even count Arachnid, because that's almost, you know, basically... A Black Arachnia type. A Black Arachnia type. But, you know, Breakdown and uh, Knockout are, like, you know, the your two kind of new characters. Otherwise, it's like everything is 
It's recycled. Ooh. So, new even stuff. Breakdown is, even Breakdown is kind of half and half. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean the most non the most new character stuff is like non show toys, right? In Prime, right? Because you got your dead ends and your hot shots and stuff. But I mean the show is just really sticking to those same set of names again and again. But even those are recycled. I mean those aren't exactly. new either. So. And while I don't expect Thundertron to appear in the show anytime soon, at least we're getting something that's not like you know a recolor mm -hmm. for a new character. Very true. I mean, I mean, to think that we've really only got with three or so recolors at this point is not bad, not yeah, bad no. at all. I mean, at this point, we would you know normally have half the line repainted or more. So I mean, and there is a whole sort of set of re. Repaints that are coming, but that's with the the BBTS exclusives. So, not, well, yeah, they're exclusives to a website, and at retail, we're just not seeing that much mold reuse. It's kind no. of odd. Although we've had reuse. two repaints of Bumblebee already. Jeez. Well, it's Bumblebee. Yeah, I know. Anyway, no, Thundertron is is I definitely going to be. I mean, looking at uh, at this image here, I mean, it's just it just looks really sweet. We're and in the robot mode. I'm kind of excited for it because I got to see it uh, up close at Botcon mm -hmm. on the uh, Hasbro panel table after the panel. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I didn't get to do that. Uh, I believe it was Rick Alvarez hung around afterward and was talking to a couple of people, and they had a Thundertron on the table. So I got to go up there and get a really good look at it. Sweet. So it, it, it's kind of connecting to a BotCon memory. Memories. <laughs> Plus it's cool it's got, the, it's got the peg leg deal going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of neat. I like it. Okay, well, that will do it for our news this week. Yay. A couple interesting things, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, some good stuff. I mean, you know, any, uh, we're looking at eventually getting some new figures, which is good. I mean, that's... You know, right now everything's kind of stagnant. I mean, there's a little bit of stagnation right now it really because, is. I mean, I'm like going to the store and I'm like, okay, I'm ready for my Brutica set. I'm ready for some, yeah, no you know, kidding. new stuff out of Prime. So it's coming. It's just not here just yet. So I'm just afraid we're going to be waiting a little while yet for Bruticus because a lot of stores are just starting to get their fill of uh, Generations Wave One. Yeah, I did. Actually, I was at Walmart yesterday, and they had a bunch of that that yeah. out. So, yeah. All right. Well, come back and see us next week for another Tformers.com news desk, where we'll bring you the best of next week's news. Interesting news. Uh, the Chinese Generations Deluxes uh, were found today in, in Illinois' uh, Toys R Us. I didn't realize they were going to be out so soon. I Well, I mean, I think they said it was going to be around October. And, you know, Close. the. Yeah, I mean, it's usually at least a couple weeks earlier than what they say. So. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. So all four is four, right? Yeah, yeah. four. Um, the reports right now are that there are no short pack toys in the Toys R Us assortment, cool. whereas the Asian version only had one wheelie to account for three cliff jumpers. Oh, that's great news! Yeah, mm. yeah. So it shouldn't be hard to find the one toy you want out of that. I, which might keep yeah, yeah. Remind me what's in that set again. It's wheelie, Springer, cliff jumper, Springer, Swerve, and cliff jumper. Swerve's okay. not bad. Yeah, so I want Springer. Time. I want Springer just because I want the mold, not because of the enormous head. The mold's pretty. And good. I want Wheelie yeah, just because said. it's ridiculous <laughs> and it's a good mold. Yes, and it's in the most proper color for anything, which is orange. Yeah, and I the want, new head yeah. looks good. I want two wheelies. Yeah. Yeah. Also, what she said. I two wheels? Yes. What I are you going to do with two wheelies? I'm going to have them battle each other. You only uh, need one wheelie in yeah. order to. Heather pop has a wheelie. two wheelies. Heather, yes, Heather does have two wheelies. <laughs> Yeah, I love that book. <laughs> uh -huh. I wish I had two mommies. Oh, man. I I one That's mommy. actually legitimately kind of a sad statement. It is. 
<laughs> wow. Actually, I wish I had. I wish I had my Why? two dads. That was the best show ever. <laughs> like them, you had. John. They were your dads. No, that was that was great. Okay. Uh, also, uh, let's hey, see. Wheelie. Yes, I want two wheelies. Uh, also, the ultimate gift set now up uh, for pre-order at Hasbro Toy Shop. Uh, I saw that. I saw that in the news um, today, but I was never able to actually find it. I guess I should have followed a link or something. Um, it's supposed to be... Uh, it's going to Hasbro Toy Shop and click on the link in the sidebar, what's new to Hasbro Toy Shop. Then let's do that. So yeah. It. Or you can just uh, so, search for it. Ultimate gift. Uh, should bring it so up. This is, it this is, this really? has gone yeah. through the motion of being a Walmart exclusive, a wide release, to a now uh, an online exclusive. Uh, the Walmart... Part was mostly rumor. I mean, we didn't really have anybody telling us directly this is going to be a Walmart exclusive at X and X point this year. Um, but the fact that it's now turned up at Big Bad Toy Store and Hasbro Toy Shop makes it seem like something that was going to go somewhere and now they're stuck with. Yeah. Well, so, somewhere in great quantity. Let's pre so order oh. at Hasbro Toy Shop. That means it's what, 60 at Big Bad Toy Store? Uh, it's 40 at Big Bad Toy Store. Yeah, okay, well, that's not as bad. Uh, Big Bad Toy Store's pre-orders are actually starting to be filled now, too. Oh, really? Yeah. 40, okay, so it's 30 bucks, and it doesn't start shipping until uh, the 22nd. Right. Yeah, it's with shipping, yeah. so... Uh, yep. I can live without that for now. <laughs> it's I one don't... of those that's kind of meh, you know? Well, it's not like you're going to probably have a hard time finding that a little later on anyway. Yeah. But I mean, the it's a really is, focused interest set. Well, my thing is, though, is, like, is the price really going to get any better, though? Like, are you doing well, yourself a favor by waiting? You know, a lot of these, it's like, if this was in the store, then we could wait and say, okay, it's going to go on clearance. But Yeah, that the, would go on clearance, I'm certain of that. You know oh, what I mean? God, yes. What's the likelihood this set's going to go on clearance if you want it? If the okay, Battle in Space but, set but went on clearance, to, this is going on clearance. What you also have to think about with this is that you're getting... Two deluxes and two uh, five dollar Legends toys in a set for thirty dollars. You're basically getting the Legends for free. Yeah, basically. I mean, you're, it, the stuff or, in there is already pretty well priced compared to uh, what retail. Is or right you can now. look at it since th they typically go up and down in the prices of um, deluxes. It seems like when they have more heavy new molds, they're like fifteen bucks. When they're more heavily like reused molds, they're closer to ten. You could really look at this that you're basically getting it for what you would get it for at retail. That makes no sense at all. Sure I mean, does. you could say that. <laughs> the pro I mean, the problem is is that the price on the deluxes is not going down. It's staying right around 12 or, or I mean, really like 14. I don't know, man. The the rehash stuff. I don't know. They, it, it just seems like they go... Now, it's more... It seems like the prices go up. Then they go down. Walmart, Walmart specifically fluctuates a lot on the prices that they charge for deluxes. Uh, they used to. They really haven't over the last year and a half yeah. or so. What about? No. So, but you know, all yeah. they've done, all they've done is jump from the twelve eighty seven now to fifteen forty seven for the deluxes. I don't. <coughs> my, they're, not 15, they're not fifteen forty seven at my Walmart. At least not the last time I checked. Walmart. Now I tell you where you are going to punch yourself in the crotch is when this shows up at Ross. For like twenty dollars, and then you're going to be. Like, it's vaguely possible we've had <laughs> has toy shop stuff go to Ross before. Yeah, like right. uh, over uh, Overkill and uh, whatever the Megatron drag strip. drag strip. Megatron showed up too, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All oh, four well. toys showed up at Ross and Marshall. Was the and fourth such. one Optimus? I, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, from the uh, Ultimate Battle set or Ultimate. Yeah, yeah. So I'm torn because I actually want every figure in this set. So. Uh. I I want sort of. it too. I, I only really care about the Jazz because Jazz is such a good toy. It's a, the yeah. Tech doesn't really do anything for me, but I don't mind having another Jazz. But um, see, I don't have an Optimus that I feel confident, like you know, really playing with and and really messing with. Like I transformed that mold, Ultra Magnus, out of my gift set once. I didn't get the original um, Laser Optimus uh, when it was out, so. Um, so I don't have that mold, and you, then you didn't miss out on much. Yeah, he's I know like, I didn't, but it's like I don't have one that I can just, you know, hey, oh, okay, and if it breaks, like I don't care, you know what I mean? Right. So I don't know. I'm a little torn, and then you know, the Thundercracker, I want more so than the 
um, motor master. But. Yeah, I don't really care about the legends in the set, but like we pointed out already, those are basically coming free. So yeah, I mean, and, complain yeah. about. That's not a bad deal. He'll go cool with my little star scream. I've got no, I, mean, I fully intend to get one of these sets in as near a future as I can manage. Honestly, I think what I'll do is like wait either until there's something else. I mean, because it's fifty dollars for free shipping right now. Yeah. You know, if that's out there for a month or two, they may go to full free shipping. You know. Yeah, I mean, the, if it's free shipping, I'll take Christmas, it. Especially coming up toward Christmas, there's going to be a promo code that will either knock off the price to offset the shipping, or it will just be outright a free shipping promotion, and then you can grab that. Yeah, that that would be that would be the thing that would get me to to click buy. Yeah, but I've got a lot of figure arts I've got to buy right now, so you know, I got to think about this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, so. In Japan, it looks like uh, the bot shots are called new be cool toys. What? That's new be cool. New be cool. No, just new be cool. cool. Be cool. I know. I'm trying to butcher it further. Yeah, the very definitely better. <laughs> better than the awful so, that it is. So, so <laughs> yeah, they come boxed individually. Yeah. <laughs> It's awesome. it's kind of crazy. Um, I and they're being sold for like seven hundred yen each. Uh, so, let's see, what's that? Nine bucks? About nine dollars? Yeah. Not nine dollars? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Don't get. I love I love these guys, but um, no. Nine I, I kind of want to have one just for the novelty of the packaging. Um, yeah, uh, I don't. I don't. Yeah, if that I, is super Japanese. If I can only yeah. have one, I don't know which one I would get. Well, even the power even glide the brand probably. name for it is super Japanese, since the whole thing is a word play on how they pronounce the English word vehicle. Oh, oh man. It's so okay. good. Sure. So that's how that came about. If it came with some pocky. I'd be all in. <laughs> well, you, so, you can just go to Walmart and buy Pocky for a dollar a box. <laughs> and tape yeah. it to the side. It's just crazy <laughs> to me that Walmart sells not Pocky. It's the though, man. Yeah, I know, right? I need my Transformers gift with purchase Pocky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it needs a little square of flavorless gum in there or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Some sort of incentive. Yes. Or, you know, sell, sell it as a model kit, maybe. Oh, God. Cool. That's right. On sprues, yeah, just just, just give it to you know, like, have some sp- have know, it on sprues and include like a couple of screws that you need to hold the thing together. You know, somewhere in Japan, there's some kid that's like, man, I really need some gum. What's this plastic thing? Throws it out. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, that's sure something. Okay, that's Japan. That's hey, Japan. on a related note, real quick, uh, I don't know if we're planning on talking about this, but uh, there's images now of Fall of Cybertron Soundwave in package. Oh, really? Oh. And it's like the most attractive packaging I've seen in, I don't know, memory. Oh, please share that with the chat so I can look it's, at it. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're at Linky. It's, uh, Linky. it's uh, I'm slick. too lazy to find it. Slick. Well, and I would never think to go look at Cybertron myself. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Well, grin and bear it just for this once. As long as uh, it's just pictures. He's quite uh, handsome. I'm, quite getting an, I'm getting air message on their side. Air uh-huh. Oh, uh, oh no! Did they pull it or something already? No, or? No, no, no. The page is trying to load, but they've got some of their page coding kind of screwed <laughs> up. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm not sad. saying it sucks. Surprise! Fail. Surprise! We're kind of saying it sucks. <laughs> yeah. So, so oh, also, you don't have a virus. Package. Yeah. So forgive us, uh, T formers. And Jack and yeah, company. give us this one time. I yeah. know, I know Jack's catching up. I know he's posting like a much better quality picture right now. Yeah, and it won't include all the like wacky code. Yeah, but so go sit on that side. No, nah, we we have friends at Sabertron. We're we're just we're just joking. Friendly. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. This, this is this is really nice looking. It's a nice looking box. That's is. that's the best looking box I've seen since like the Armada Voyager stuff. So okay. is so that corner cut on the, the bottom? Good. Yeah, I can't tell. That's, that's really awesome. weird. Now, if you took this and put it in Photoshop and set it to black and white, that would also be uh, Sound Blaster's packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Nice. It does. It looks like that. It is. You can tell by the shadow. It's corner cut on the bottom part of the package. Yeah, but, you know, where the figure's standing in there, the weight's under the flat part, so it won't matter. No, yeah. no, it's just, it's kind of interesting. More yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. an interesting totally unnecessary. Yeah. 
Well, they usually will do that to cut corners. It's really the opposite effect, but... That was a good Laser joke, beak included. I like that yeah, little flag man. on it. Um, yeah, I, I, we haven't gotten a lot of packaging I, that I think has been really good or nice looking. Well, I mean, I, I really dig the way the Ultimate Gift Set package looks. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. yes. I mean, as of late, up until recently, like, uh, of course, we have uh, Bruticus, that box is coming out. Ne- is it next month after next? Month. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's great. But, I mean, I, I really, honest to God, think it's been since um, Armada, since the packaging, the packaging that I've really liked. And the problem with Armada, it had that curved bubble thing that just made it mm-hmm. hard to stand. Or you couldn't, like, or yeah. stack. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. They were always, like, beat to hell in the store. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. very nice looking, but not very durable. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I totally dig that. Yeah. Watch that, I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the last, like, good standout packaging I remember is um, with Robots in Disguise where it was sideways. Yeah. Oh, what was okay. it? Gotcha. Armada was like that. Too, yeah, though, but it? it had those rounded fronts on it which ruined it. Right. And they the did that with some... And well, Ener- Energon... Things. Late Energon stuff did that too. I want to say that there was there was some either Energon or classic. I, I don't, I don't even remember the Energon packaging. I remember Armada and Cybertron, and I have no clue. I because I I want to say that the um, the center bodies out of the combiners were on sideways cards. Oh well, yeah 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 they were. Yeah, I think cause they were. The, they were. When they did them in the universe style packaging for big lots. Those were also yeah the, right uh, yeah. The landscapes. I remember back in 2002. Or <laughs> better days, better simpler days. times. <laughs> we didn't have this Twitter. We had to send instant messages <laughs> over the you know, internet. Keep, in, in, just, just, just <laughs> over MySpace. 2000, 2004. <laughs> keep this in mind. Is when uh, <laughs> Gmail came out. Yeah, we've only had yeah, Gmail. Okay. We've only had Gmail since like '04. It yeah. seems like it's been part of my How life. How do we live? I don't if, know. If your friends were on America Online, okay, you, okay. Right. My internet came on a disc. You bitches. Yes. Get <laughs> it at every single store. Just, in the just, world. just something I found today. I was talking with a friend at work, and he just had mentioned Ayn Rand. And he, he mentioned he thought there was an objectivist party. And I'm like, no, no, there's not. He's like, yeah, there is. So we went to the website for the objectivist party. The presidential candidate for the objectivist party at objectivistparty.us, it lists his email address. And he says, email me. And it's an AOL address. <laughs> wow. So that's, yeah. I that, should tell you something, they're, Brian. They're not I winning. Don't... They're not winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not winning. They're not launching a high, highly sophisticated social media no. campaign. No. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, last item in the news uh, before we uh, jump to um, rescue bots. Uh, so, it looks like there is some sort of uh, deal that Hasbro Canada is doing um, to get rid of to alleviate all these... the bumblebee problem. Yeah. It, so. <laughs> you can brick your house with it now. Yeah. Or... <laughs> well, it says. I like how it says specifically. Uh, TF Prime Deluxe First Edition Bumblebee style only. Yeah. So what what they're doing is uh, they're going around through the store putting seven dollar off coupons on their bumblebees. But it's, it's the thing is it, it's it's uh, first edition so. Oh know, yeah, because in Canada they, they got it. Yeah. Edition problem. Yeah. yeah. So you know we would gladly trade them for that problem here. Not for first edition Did you like Bumblebee, it? We wouldn't. But we, we would do it like the guns program, like you buy the bumblebee here and then like huh? trade. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, like it's kind of funny. I, for different bumblebee. So I mean, but it, it, did they have the same problem with not obviously not the same bumblebee problem? But I mean, can you still get like uh, Starscream on the shelf? Yeah, I mean that's such a phenomenal toy. If you know, if uh, there should be yeah, like, it's, it's still possible to find Star Screams, and I think even RCs. Uh, RCs are, and, RC's uh, good, but Star Screams amazing. There should be like yeah, some I, sort of exchange program for like US and like what was it? Uh, <laughs> the, what was the uh, website? Um, 
the I think it was Hong Kong that where it was it was a site where basically it was helping people trade TF trade something like that. I don't know. That sounds interesting. No, but there's a thing. Basically, yeah. it was like helping the. Old, I was going to say TF Exchange, but that was the old Tformers dot com domain, I think. Uh, but basically, a way for fans like over in Japan and the U.S. to get together to uh, basically trade stuff. And I can't oh, so like to set up like almost like a middleman kind of trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 yeah. It, it, it's a fairly popular site, and I can't even remember the freaking name of it. It sort of changed. I don't- its- I don't know how how net. I mean, there's a you know we well, run into that a little bit, like you know, as I've gotten into like the Toku stuff. But for Transformer stuff, some of that just stuff is like wide release that you're really better off getting unless it's an exclusive. You're really better off like just buying it from a website and just paying whatever it is that yeah. you know yeah. your import fee is. That's I mean, there's the a problem. time when. That- yeah, I mean, there's a time when that would have been a deal, but, like, mm-hmm. unless it's an exclusive item, like, it's only at a convention or only available, you know, to Japanese citizens or something, I don't know how beneficial that is for the Americans, uh, you know, on that side. Yeah. Yeah, 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 because, yeah, I mean, like, right off the top of your head, you can probably think of four or five trusted sites where you can just pick up Japanese stuff whenever you want or pre-order it and know it's going to be fine. Yeah. So Sometimes, I mean, you know. there's, like, you know, crazy markup though on certain things well, yeah, certain but, i mean things. that's the case that's the case where said store has to go through several steps on their own right. to get the inventory in the first right, place right. and it would be the same deal as if you paid someone directly to go do that themselves and buy the store yeah like i mean for example like i'm buying a, a japanese web exclusive figure from dac uh, dac's helping me out with it and um uh, you know the the big bad toy store's price is like one hundred and five dollars before they ship it to you. Um, whereas, like, I'm going to end up paying about eighty five dollars shipping and everything. That's not bad to, get to me. No, no I mean, that's, that's that's a pretty good deal. But you know, if you don't really know someone, but that the only reason I'm doing that is because it's a web exclusive figure. Yeah, DAC is in Japan. I completely forgot that. Yeah, he lives in Japan now. Um, so if there's if there's something that is imported in bulk, though, you know you're going to get a better price on it. Like you know, I can get better prices on some of those other figures just because they get imported in bulk, which lowers your overall, you know, shipping and import costs and everything. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, that was a cohesive discussion for me. I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, Manny's. <laughs> Color cream. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I mean, if, if this was superhero time, I would be making far more poop jokes. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. We, we can't have everything, right? Hey, hey actually, <laughs> how do you find right. how do you find superhero time? Toku podcast. Po- Toku podcast dot com. <laughs> Don't forget it. Toku podcast dot com. I know I mentioned it while we were recording the show this week, but I'm not sure if that might have got lost in editing. No, it was in there. It was in oh, there. Okay. Sweet. Okay. In fact, before the That's- cut. Bravo, by the way, bravo on the editing on that show. Because at the end of it was a butchered mess. And the XD made it sound very good. So. Yeah, well, you know, when you're given stinking rotten lemons. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, I was like, man, he's like a miracle worker. <laughs> I've always said the editing process is my favorite part of doing the show. If I could do that without having to actually, like, talk to you people. Right. He would just do I that. Mean, I'm sure Brian would be more than happy to let you edit stuff for him. Yes. <laughs> yeah, except Brian don't edit anything anymore. That's true. Well, I have to edit the video together. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, would, I would edit video together. I need to send you that, JD. I know. God, I'm sorry. I'll, I, I've got it right, my, right I over only, here. Because what's XV going to say? What are you going to say, XV? Say it. Say it. What do you think? I'm giving I'm giving Brian crap for not sending me something, but what are you going to say? I have no idea. That's exactly That's right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, John, what's going on in the chat this week? Uh, well, let's see. Working my way backwards. So, we were talking a little bit about first edition toys. Now, I've never seen. I've never played with first edition toys in my. Uh, in my own personal experience, so but everybody says they're amazing and the best thing ever. Is that true? Uh, the well, two I, mean, I have are. Edition, I've got a first edition Bumblebee, but I don't have a red Bumblebee to compare it to. So, 
Mm. Uh, do I, I, I actually can't remember if I have a first edition Bumblebee or not because I try to avoid Bumblebee. Now, you know, of course, I also have the good luck with that. first edition mold. And it's yeah. good. It's good. But it's not as, it's not, I wouldn't say it's great. It's good. The thing with the thing with that cliff jumper, and I don't know how true it is for the others. There are just so many like little fiddly parts in the transformation that are not even really necessary. It's so it's like, like an alternator or something. Sort of. It's like they're adding stuff that can move just because they want it to be more complex, right. and it doesn't need it at all. It's yeah. just more stuff to forget to do in the right order, where you have to go back two steps to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm always skeptical when I hear, you know, this term that, like, oh, the first edition stuff or the Japanese thing is better. Um, it, you know, no, I, can it, I can tell you for sure, though, that first edition Starscream is better than any other because you can pose it to look like Goatsy. Well, I mean, <laughs> and you can't top that. Yeah, no. that's right. Um, it's pretty amazing. That's even I mean, I was, I was impressed so with um, the Supreme Optimus Primal toy for the longest time because it could reach and scratch its own butt. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a plus. But you know, like, and it roars. You know, everybody's up. That's not as important as scratching your own butt, Brian. <laughs> but when it randomly does it in the middle of the night, that's yeah, that's a little creepy. Yeah. Okay, it's not supposed uh, to do that. I think yours might be like possessed or something. No, nah, yeah. it's just in a box piled up on with with other stuff, and if it settles, it just yeah. Should light it on fire. Yeah. Should definitely <laughs> light. It on fire. And you're <laughs> the blood of a virgin as well. <laughs> Uh, that's just what happens in JD's head. Yes. What else? Um, <laughs> yeah, what the, uh, I mean, like the break. You know, everybody's crying again. You know, kind of going back to the. Oh my gosh, we didn't get breakdown. But you know that that mold is a little scary. Um, you know, it seems very breakable. So, you know, I'm not inclined to say that that's you know per se better than what we would have gotten if Hasbro would have made something which we didn't, which is the real problem. But. Yeah, totally agree. Hey, the other thing uh, we mentioned real quickly is, uh, I don't know if you guys have talked about this on previous shows, but it does seem really likely that Asian brawn is canceled. That's sad. Um, that's, I've seen that come up in some forums, and it's especially going around today, people claiming to have sources telling them that that's not even going to come out in Asia anymore, and yeah. I don't buy it yet. Uh, uh, I mean, we don't... Mind, we don't it, it's never over till it's over and all that. Well, keep but. in mind that in Asia, so far, only um, Ransack and Hotspot have been released. So until oh, really? Asia gets Megatron mm -hmm. without a brawn, you know, I'm still not declaring that one. I hope off. they don't cancel Megatron. Both of those... Megatron actually looks good, and Brawn looks terrible in a great way. Yeah. So... <laughs> You know, it'd be sad if both of them get kicked. Anyway, so, but yeah, okay, so that's running around. And the other thing is, um, so the Back to the Ultimate gift set, so we were kind of talking about yay or nay and whether uh, everybody dug it enough to buy it or not. My only beef with it was, so it just seems like a sort of, I hate to be like a crusty old collector, but it does seem kind of like a missed opportunity where they could have done more relevant characters instead of repaints of the same character. Because, I mean, this is essentially the same way we got Skywarp and Ultra Magnus back in Classics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it seems like they could have gone a little bit further. It's a little weird. Um, I don't know what their thinking was on that. If you take it as the original thought, which was that this was going to be a Walmart exclusive, the Walmart person's like, okay, we want uh, some of your headline characters for an exclusive set. Right. So, yeah. of course, it's going to go Optimus Prime and somebody else we have a mold for. Yes, that guy got ripped I, in half I, the first movie. I, I think mm -hmm. we're just lucky that they didn't take Jazz and do it yellow as a Bumblebee. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that is sad but true. Or gold is gold bug. Oh, man. God, well, yeah. So it, it, no, not gold bug, gold bumblebee. Remember? Gold gold oh, bumblebee. yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, shout outs to the lawyers. So that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's what's going on, Chad. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Okay. That Let's... was fun, John. I'm glad you were back to do that. Yes. Yay. Yes, hopefully come back next week. We would love that. Yeah. We love you, John. Do it live. Yes. Actually, I won't be on the show. I'll be in New York. That's another story. But uh, oh, oh. I'll say hi to Ant if I run across him in a dark alley. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's just stop there. Let's stop there. So let's oh, go ahead. God. Let's... As he's mugging me. Yes. Cause... No, God. Just no more mugging <laughs> comments. No. What? No. Come on. No. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump to uh, Rescue Bots uh, this week. Amy and Nicole review. 
the alien invasion of Griffin Rock. After that, we'll have comic news. And then Transformers Rewind, which is Dark Designs. Yay! <laughs> Yay, we'll be back right after these messages. It's now time for Comic News with Amy Morgan. Hello, Transformers fans. It is Amy. I am back once again with another Transformers Comics news and reviews in five minutes. Now, I'm a little bit late getting this video out this week because I've had a really, really busy week. And so because of that, I'm going to rush through this video. I hope I hope you understand. It's not that I don't love everybody, but it's just, yeah, I, I, I've got to get it out and i got to get done like really, really fast. And I've only got a few minutes because i got to go pick up kids. So... Um, out this week, there really isn't anything out this week. Uh, Robots in Disguise Annual was supposed to be, um, well, kind of, placeholder-wise, I was thinking that it was going to be this week. But, turns out that they are going to have that out next week, plus More Than Meets the Eye issue number 9. So, if you go to your local comic shop, uh, you can probably pick up issues that came out weeks, prior weeks. But, um, yeah, if you're looking for anything new this week, it's not going to be out, unfortunately. Um, been watching on Twitter. I'm, I'm there a lot. If you haven't followed my Twitter, you need to because I find things all the time and I tweet about them. Uh, one thing, uh, I do follow a lot of people. So, um, Shane McCarthy is somebody that's on my, uh, my tweet list that I, that I follow and he teased a few things. So I'm going, I have to, you know, say what he said. So he said, spending the day writing about giant robots and people wonder why I look forward to work. So, when he was asked by another fan, um, is, you know, he's doing more Transformer work, he said, hmm, is that what I'm doing? So, yeah, I'm hoping that um, this means that we might be getting something out of Shane McCarthy. Now, I know some people might not be happy with that, but I am. I, I like Shane. I think he's great. I've liked quite a few things that he's dr written, especially Drift. Um, and that's another thing that's in the solicits this month. Uh, for for December is that we're going to be getting a drift hardcover. So either he's going to be working on something new, or maybe he's actually writing something to put in the drift hardcover. So cross our fingers. We'll find out maybe soon. I don't know. New, new York Comic Con is going to come up soon, so it could be that he's got something that he's actually working on that's new, or it could just be that he's putting extra stuff in the hardcover, or maybe he was just. Teasing just to tease. They do that sometimes. You never know. Um, also, Transformers Multiverse went live this last week. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, I will be putting links right here for the Facebook and the Deviant Art links. You can go check it out, get involved, or just watch. They're awesome and they're doing a great job. So go check it out. Um, also... Just wanted to put this in here really quick that um, Andrew Griffith, the artist that is doing the ongoing art uh, in Robots in Disguise, is having a birthday this week. So go send him wishes. Happy birthday. Yay. Uh, and last and certainly not least, uh, we have the December solicits, which I'm not going to go through every little morsel of like information that they put out for this. But I will tell you what we're getting. We're going to be getting um, More Than Meets the Eye, Issue 12. We're going to be getting Robots in Disguise, Issue 12. Uh, we will also be getting Robots in Disguise, Volume 2. And for one of the biggest announcements I'd have to say is that they will be bringing back the spotlights. And we will be getting our first spotlight in December, written by James Roberts, titled Orion Pax. So... This should be pretty interesting. If anybody's out there that hasn't, you know, been really happy with the fact that we haven't been doing spotlights, well, it's back. Spotlights are back, baby. We'll see how they do. Um, and I'm, I'm excited for them. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, we'll see how they do as in, oh, I don't think they're going to do good. I was like, no, actually, I think they're going to do really great. I think there's a really important reason why we have spotlights back. I'm really happy with having one shots back again. So, yeah. This is this is a great opportunity for people to get like little bits of stuff. If they don't if they don't want to catch up on other stuff, they can read a spotlight and still feel like they're, you know, reading Transformers comics. So there you go. Also, like I said before, we're gonna be getting a hardcover of the complete drift. It will have the four issues from the trade paperback 
and the spotlight in it as well. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to get it because I want to know what extras in there. I hope that there's extras, but if there's not extras, I'll still be happy because I like drift. So um, we're also going to be getting issue 86 of Regeneration 1 in December. And we'll be getting the G.I. Joe Transformers Volume 2 crossover volume. Um, and we'll also be getting the second issue of Rage of the Dinobots, which is in the Transformers Prime um, continuity. And then lastly, we'll be getting a Transformers Prime Season 2, the little 5x7 volumes. I don't know if it's going to have anything new in it or if it's just going to be basically retelling the story of what's in the episodes on TV. So I will be getting it just to find out, and I will let you know when I know, and there you go. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and that's pretty much it in the way of news this week. Uh, there are covers for all of these comics that have been teased will be up on T-Formers. You can check that out. Um, they're all amazing. I'm I'm really liking what they're doing with it. Um, definitely looking forward to all of the stuff that we're going to be getting in December. So check it out. And now for my comic review. I am going to be reviewing Transformers Fall of Cybertron digital only comic, which has been coming out for the last couple weeks. Um, there's only three issues right now. But I'm, doing, I'm going to review this one because there's no comic this week and I haven't even given this one any love. So... Um, it can be purchased via the IDW website or Comixology website or the apps for both of these companies as well. Um, it's eight pages. It's written by John Barber and it's drawn by new artist Diraj Verma, who is selling the art pages uh, via his Twitter account, which I will now display across my screen to those who might be interested in that. And the story. Well, basically you're getting a story that ties in to both the video game, Fall of Cybertron, and of course, since it's in Transformers Prime Universe, it's also fitting in there as well. Um, it's basically telling the story of what happened to Grimlock and his team before the game kicks off. So when they said, oh, he left his post, we don't know where he is. Well, this basically tells that story. You're going to find out exactly why he left his post, a little bit about him, a little about each member of the team, and what they are looking for. He basically sends Swoop off, and Swoop finds the information. They haven't really revealed anything, but if you have actually played the game, you know what it is that they're going to. That you know exactly what it is that they're going to find. I'm not going to say it here, just for those people that haven't gotten the game or haven't gotten the comic, and they don't want to be spoiled. Whichever, uh, but yes, this is this is the tie-in. This is the little story that's going to tell you how. They left their post and got tied in and then, of course, shows up in the game. So what I think about it, it the first issue did not really pull me in. I mean, it did in some ways, but in others it didn't. Um, I wouldn't say that it's, it's like the best comic I've ever read. But I am, I'm having some difficulties with a few things, and it has everything to do with the fact that I loved the game, I liked what the game set up, and I kind of had some preconceived notions of what this character was, um, Grimlock, who he was, and I'm having a little bit of problem resolving that with what I'm reading on the page. Now, I wouldn't say it's one of the weakest ones that John Barber has written, but I would say that it's not one of the ones that I'd say that, that really catches me as the, like one of the best ones he's written. Um, that being said, here I am three issues in, and I'm actually starting to kind of like what, where he's going with it. It feels like a slow build. It is kind of answering some of my character questions, but not directly, and I'm wondering if by the end I will actually love it more than I started out with. I know that's that's kind of sitting on the fence a little bit, but up until now I haven't really been very impressed with it, and I hope that I will eventually like it more once I get to the end. And I will say something about it um, on on video when we get there. Um, I have not, we haven't even reviewed it on the underbase because we've had mixed feelings. Um, also, the artist, eh, he's not my first choice. It's not bad. It's there are some 
panels that really work for me and then there are others that it's just not working for me. Uh, some perspective and some proportion issues um, but it's very stylized and like I said there there are a few there are a few pages that I've been really impressed by. Um, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm kind of alright with it but I wouldn't say again I'm sitting on the fence with this. I just I want to I want to get to the end because it is a digital only and I haven't gotten all the story yet and yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I've, I've, I've read worse. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's not the best. It's not the worst. It's just kind of right in the middle. Some people would say that's mediocre and I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm with that. That's probably where it's at. But like I said, three issues in and I'm starting to kind of feel a little bit differently about it. So I'm willing to give it another, I'm willing to buy the whole thing and find out what I think at the very end. And I will let you know. So that's my review. Um, Again, check me out on Twitter. Follow me. I, I do tweet about a lot of stuff, but I also tweet about a lot of um, relevant Transformer stuff. And, hey, contests, um, artists putting artwork up, uh, new people on Twitter. James Roberts is there now. He wasn't there previously. He just got on the Twitter board um, recently. So um, there's just lots of lots of good stuff that's there. Um, and, of course, I, I tweet about... Um, underbase stuff and I, I recently did an interview with uh, the Transformers Multiverse guys and I haven't put it up yet but that will be live soon as well so definitely check it out and um, yeah I'll be putting out stuff all over the place and anything comic related that's me <laughs> anyhow uh, hopefully we'll see you next week on Radio Free Cybertron bye bye <laughs> Radio Free Cybertron will return after these messages. You can hear our show on Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your iPhone, Android phone, Blackberry, or Palm phones. On demand and on the go. Don't have Stitcher? Download it for free today at Stitcher.com or in the app stores. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Boomer hidden message, batteries not included. Boomers and GoBots sold separately. Leader one, this boom spells your doom. Some are friendly, some are enemy. Let's boom psycho a message you'll never forget. Special delivery. New GoBot Boomer vehicles. Vehicles and GoBots also separately from top. I'm Stan Bush, and it's your time to listen to Radio Free Cybertron. Transformers Rewind is Dark Designs, because he's a smirker. They're playing our song, Megatron. Time to dance. The Predacons ambush the Maximals and seem to have them pinned down, until Rhinox uses some outside-the-box tactics and starts a rock slide that buries the Predacons. Optimus is hurt, and Rhinox steps up to organize the retreat while the Predacons are still trapped. Optimus comments on the impressive leadership skill, but Rhinox says it's not really in his programming. He'd much rather trail along behind and smell the flowers. There's only one alternative. Attack. We storm that position. You're on the wrong wavelength there, Lizard Lips! We run! Oh, yes. And 
just where do we run, rodent? It shouldn't be this easy. No, but mustn't complain. Right, Oxen, shoot straight for crying out loud! You're missing him by a parsec! Close the file on Optimus Primal and delete. More than one way to skin a cat, so to speak. Megatron is also impressed by Rhinox and gives the matter some thought as he sits under a rock. Tarantulas captures Rhinox, who is bringing up the rear as the Maximals headed home. The Rhinoceros. I do believe I may have underestimated him. Yes. And I could find a use for someone like that. Tarantulas! Looks clear. Keep on going. I'll catch up. When he wakes up, Rhinox is tied down in the middle of another ridiculous Megatron plot device. The machine forcibly reprograms and repaints Rhinox as a Predacon. The Maximals, having noticed his absence a while ago, are finally able to tap into Rhinox's communicator just in time to hear all the plot-relevant details. But Optimus doesn't seem too worried about it. Rhinox is now evil and has free run of the Predacon base. How could this possibly go wrong? Scorponok! Terrorize! Terrorize! Oh, you're back on their side now? Gee, a guy can hardly keep track. What's he talking about? Uh, don't listen to him. When I slagged you and Bug Eyes, he was watching and smirking. Th that, that's a lie! Then how come you're looking so shifty all of a sudden? I am not. He's a smirker. <laughs> Mango. Rhinox episodes really strike me a certain way, and just like the Low Road did it in a really comedic way, this also has its comedic elements, but retains the serious quality with the escalating peril Rhinox is creating. And just the progression of how he's slaughtering his way through the Predacons is just... It really typifies the difference between Beast Wars and G1 for me. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I think... There's a couple of interesting things, you know, going on in, in this episode. I mean, one, it's, you know, just seeing Rhinox as sort of an evil version of himself. Um, I think one of the striking things, I think, is a big difference between, say, G1 and uh, Beast Wars is, uh, you know, like, you know, the difference between Optimus Prime and Optimus Primal. You know, I think Optimus Prime would have been one of those guys to like, you know, charge in there, and we've got to find, we've got to save him. But Primal's much more contemplative, and you know, a little more thoughtful, and he's kind of like, you know, hmm, evil Rhinox. That cannot be good for the Predacons. <laughs> you know, and so he's he's apt to like get in position and wait for it to really boil over before you know charging in. So he's way more thoughtful. Uh, well, even though the rest way. of the troops want to, he's like, no, oh, yeah. let, we'll be fine. Let's just wait and see yeah. what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he totally calls Which is it. good. It makes right. him more of a leader. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, uh, the thing is, is that Rhinox it. also gets it at the very end. He's like, you know, he gets the fact that, you know, he's he's been changed and that's not necessarily a bad thing for him. He's like, yeah, see, you know, you sh- I guess you should have thought twice about, you know, making me who I am now. <laughs> Yeah, he's like uh, very comfortable in being evil. He's he doesn't show he never shows any sign of wanting to be turned good again. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he's like Makes this sense, is awesome. like he's evil. Why would you you, know, you let me out of my cage and now you're stuck with me, man? <laughs> I'm right up he this, shoots like, Megatron's knees out. Yeah, and this even you know, and this comes back of course when you get around to like Beast Machines, um, and he becomes Tankor, and you know that is a whole different thing, but. Um, but yeah, um, and there's a, there, well, there's a lot going on in this episode. Like rewatching it, I was reminded like how much is really going on here. Um, this was one of the first episodes where we had like a really big you know, fan reference. Um, I think that that the the gap between when the series started and they really kind of got into some of the lore um, as a reference to. Of course, you know, the Insecticons and Shrapnel and uh, uh, the Generation 1 stuff. You're talking about the part where Wasp Eater kind of goes a little nuts and starts really yeah. Yeah. rambling yes. out a, a buttload of stuff. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, it's also one of the first times that a fan is mentioned in Beast Wars, one of the first of the many references uh, that would come. Uh, when they refer- when uh, Wasp Eater says he's, uh, well, Black Retinia says Waspinator is Wacko. He says, no, I'm Wonko, Wonko the Sane. Well, Wonko the Sane, of course, is a character from um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but it was also Benson Yee's... Um, it was his ATT handle, I believe, even, at the time. So um, so that was a reference to um, to Benson Yee. So it was one of the first times that a fan was actually referenced. Of course, at the time, Ben was contributing to the series as well. Um, as a well, he was like the first person that uh, Larry and Bob found to <laughs> just give them information or whatever for the show. But um, but yeah, there's just a lot a lot going on um, in the episode on the side. But definitely an awesome uh, Rhinox episode. And it, I think one of the things that always strikes me is the end of the episode where they're all sort of gathered around and they're like, "So what was it like being a Predacon?" And, you know, Rhinox makes the analogy that was like being two gigs of attitude and uh, a three gig hard three drive. Gig yeah. and a two gig hard drive. And they're like, haha, that's funny, those silly Predacons. And then it like backs up and there's Dinobot. And it's like, it's going, ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very friendly. <laughs> you know, you go like, I mean, <laughs> you know, for well, being you know a, a bunch of jerks. <laughs> yeah, really, it does. It kind of makes them seem like jerks. Like, yeah. holy crap. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. You know, looking at, like, um, in the past when we review G1 episodes and you look at, like, how many characters in the episode, it's, like, 30. And, yeah. like, watching a Beast Wars episode reminds me how a small cast did this series so many favors because mm-hmm. almost every episode, they take time and they focus on the character. And so this one really, it really painted Primal in a good light. It made Dinobot interesting. It made Rhinox scary. Um, and True. you know everybody. In fact, everybody was kind of in character and got a little bit of their spotlight. Even Scorponok seemed somewhat threatening in the big fight scene at the end, when usually he's kind of played for last. Um, he actually beat somebody up. I forgot who it was, but he actually held his own. He held his own. So I mean, that's one of the things that I miss about um, Beast Wars. You get a little bit of it right now in Prime, but the small cast is um, a really great feature of this series. And you kind of see it in this episode. Mm-hmm. You know, the fight at the end of the episode really had a lot going on just by itself. Um, mm-hmm. you know, there's the Indiana Jones reference where Primal swing his swords all over the place and making the Megatron and shoots him. But then it comes back around later and Primal cuts Megatron's arm off, his dinosaur head. Yeah, which stays missing until the end of the episode. I mean, there there was just a lot packed into that fight sequence all around the short time the machine was starting to explode. And I mean, it's um, it's the typical Dino thing too, where they're maybe just barely taking the advantage of the fight, and he wants to stay and try to capture the base. 
but Optimus being Optimus is like, no, that, that's a bad idea. The thing's about to explode, and they're probably going to clobber us afterward. Let's get Rhinox and just leave. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's that great difference in thinking between the characters. Um, and it, it, I really love the way Beast Wars is written, where everybody does have their specific personality that they stick to to go on with that. You know, you can really get a feel for who every one of them is. Um, you know, Scorponok, who is probably the least developed of any of the Beast Wars characters, you know, he had his moment earlier after he gets out of the repair thing, and he's sitting there explaining to Megatron what's been going on, he's like, I look stuff and slam. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You just feel so sorry for him in that moment, and it's really great that they can do that. And then, as you mentioned, though, he gets the great the the classic line in where Rhinox is standing between um, Scorponok and um, Terrorstor. Terrorstor. Terrorstor, and he's like, ah, he was standing there laughing at you, he was smirking, and ah, he's a smirker! Love that line. Single! Killer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and, and it's, you know, it's Rhinox's intelligence with all the good weight to try to kind of deal with him earlier, and Rhinox threatened to turn him into chicken wings. So when Megatron orders Pterosaur to come after him, then later, Rhinox turns like, oh, you're on their side again? Hmm. You can use at this rate. Hmm. <laughs> He's really it- ignoring Scorponok on the other <laughs> side. I really love this episode. It's a great uh, I mean, it really it is, is a great, great episode. episode. Yeah. Especially hey, for that was- in the Beast Wars. What was Primal's plan if Rhinox had not been turned back into normal Rhinox? Was he just going to wait for evil Rhinox to kill everybody and then go in and take care of him? I would assume think so. It. Yeah. I, think I, I mean, I guess the contingency plan would be to wait until the situation is weakened inside and then try to reverse the effect of the machine themselves. So it's Although just evil Rhinox, like, gnawing on a bunch of corpses, and then they just <laughs> cut him off. I don't think they would have fared that much better against evil Rhinox. Than <laughs> they just would have left. They just would have made sure, well, there's only one life form in there. Pretty sure it's Rhinox. We're going to leave now. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll just we find a... well up enough and not alone, you know, because if he just hang, dis- yeah. dispatched all of the uh, Predacons, and he's probably going to do the same to us, too. <laughs> and you get the, the clues for impression, too. If Rhinox had not accidentally stepped into the machine, he probably would have taken over the base all by himself. Yeah. 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 With a bunch of dead bodies around. Oh, what a what a great kids show! Oh yeah, I this love that. I, oh, this, thing, oh, this is why Beast Machines is a little bit more darker than the other versions of Transformers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not interested in taking over. I'm interested in killing everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I do love the other thing though that Primal mocks Megatron in this as well. Yeah, he mocks the yes. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't take itself too seriously. They they definitely have moments where they can you know laugh at each other and you know you want you laugh with them knowing that they are mocking that and you know they just roll with the punches. It's great. So we are back uh, next week on Transformers Rewind. I guess we are doing Heavy Metal War. Heavy Metal War. Sweet, awesome. Love that episode. It's uh, probably I would consider the most iconic uh, G one episode. One. It's new, fantastic. Yes. Iconic. I like the word iconic because that doesn't mean good. It just means <laughs> yes. Remembered. Yeah. It means remember. It's iconic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a. I think for G one, especially the first two seasons, it's a good episode. Uh, for the first season, it's. An episode. Yeah, for, for the first season, it's certainly an episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you want to talk about the best of season one, probably, like, The Ultimate Doom. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. uh, that's hard to, to get around, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, so... Uh, hard to beat that one. Then, I mean, Michael Bay ripped that off, so, I mean, you know... Yeah, yeah he sure did. You know it's good if Michael Bay rips it off. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so I'm most looking forward to... Speaking uh, of which... Yes, well... Yeah. Real quick, before that, 
before that. Next week, I'm really next Damn month. It. I'm really looking forward to um, Dark uh, Dark Awakening. So, really excited <laughs> about that. So, um, yeah. So, dark, I, the, dark, dark, that's not dark design. <laughs> dark. Uh, yeah, you should actually. <laughs> I was going to say you should put um, Dark Glass in as an episode for Rewind and see if how long somebody tries to, you know. I can't find it. it. I can't find it. Where is this? April Fool's one. Yeah, ever. that would be like one. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. This year. Yeah. We, we uh, want you on for this episode of Rewind. We want you to watch Dark Glass. <laughs> can, we, can you, like, edit all this out and we can, like, save that? <laughs> yeah. That's genius. <laughs> Actually, do that. Yeah, I'm, I want to hear you know, your. I want to hear little, your review, XV. Your little like, yeah. you know, open about Dark Glass. Uh, no, Dark Designs was produced. Dark Glass was the one that wasn't produced. Don. Yeah. 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 So um, that that's that's the reason that we it would make a great April April Fool's joke. Okay, so uh, this week uh, we wanted to talk about um, Michael Bay and Transformers Four. So Michael Bay uh, reconfirms that um, you know they are going in a different direction. With uh, Transformers Four, it will uh, give the new uh, will give the line like lasting legs. Um, so, how true is that? Uh, how in th- a one hundred percent true? B eighty percent true? On a scale of salmon to jalopy, <laughs> how much? <laughs> a- this is true. So, so without Michael Bay, do you think that audiences will flock to see the Transformers? Yes. Well, sure. At least once. Yes, at least well, okay. once. They already have, right? And so, you know, it's like, they you know, they already have seen Transformers. I, I don't know that Bay... Is Bay's name really making that? I mean, this is the same guy that made Pearl Harbor. Yes, you can't people, people, like, people like his crap. I'm going to compare this to the uh, Tim Burton slash Joel Schumacher Batman films. Uh, yes. Geez. So, oh, really? so uh, people people okay. went to go see the first. They went to go see Batman uh, for Batman Forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, they yes. didn't go see Batman and Robin. They gave him one movie, and that was that. They made the second movie, and it bombed. Um, even though it's very likely if they make a Transformers 5 that has no bay, that it will be a better film, I think audiences really prefer his easy-to-digest explosive style. Well, and that's the whole thing with the live-action movies, which is something we discussed to some extent before. They're made for the casual audience, which is what has to happen for them to be successful Yes. At all. Right. If you get somebody yeah. who wants to do something more in depth into the fiction, it's not going to work. Or you know that goes in its own direction and creates new fiction. Uh, well, I mean, even creating new fiction, I don't think is a wrong step. It's just oh, no, it has to be not. done in a way that's accessible to everyone, not just to yes. kids and you know five hundred adults yes. across the country. So I, I yeah, five hundred adults. Um, I think that. Uh, the best we could ever hope for would be something kind of like the Avengers, or perhaps even um, I'll That's say the best we could hope for. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, the, no, the best successful <laughs> franchise of movies. No, 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 I mean, I, I'm t- no, you know, hear me, hear, hear, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah, me out. So, no, 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 as far as, as, far as fiction, so it's 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 it's, it's a popcorn film. It's it's good. It's but you don't have to think too hard watching it. Uh, yeah, but it, it's it's commercially successful. So, like the the Transformers movies, for the most part, you watch them and you want to pound your head into the wall. Well, no, no, no. To be fair with this, the first movie you go, you sit, you eat your popcorn, and you enjoy the utter spectacle of this huge budget CGI live action Transformers movie across the country on theater screens. Now, Revenge of the Fallen. That's when you're going and trying to liquefy your brain and your skull. <laughs> I, I was literally, I found out you cannot slit your own throat with a straw. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> oh, no, no, J.D., you totally can't. You just didn't cut it the right way. Uh, I so, guess. So, but but you, you, you didn't get the slurpy style straw. But, <laughs> that'll, but, kill, that'll kill like but, three people. But the thing is, gets- the, the thing is, with the Avengers, with the Avengers, uh, it's pretty much accessible to everyone. Everyone likes it. You know, if you're a fan of like like a fan of the 
the the source, you can enjoy it. If you or, or someone who has who has no idea who the characters are, you can enjoy it. With the Transformers, if you have no idea who the characters are, you can enjoy it. But if you're like remotely a fan, like spe- like with Revenge of the Fallen, you want to you want to die. Like watching the movie, <laughs> watching the movie after it was over, I want I just swore at the screen. I was in the front row and I literally yelled s- s- swears at the at the screen while everyone around me was clapping at the movie, not at me swearing. So, I just, I just want that quote on the back of the Blu-ray case. You want to die. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, no, no, no Brian. I mean, it, comparing it to Avengers is a little bit difficult because they've had other films to establish these characters yeah. individually. And in those individual films, they've done things differently. You know, they've they've massaged those characters in slightly different ways than we're used to, you know, in some of their comic book iterations. So you've had time to get used to those characters as you see them before you get to Avengers. And even Avengers had, you know, some things that weren't weren't quite right. I mean, No, no, absolutely. You know, it's not perfect. So, it's fun. It's not perfect. Yeah, it's fun. And that's the same thing with Transformers, though. Transformers can do it even better, though, in that sense. I mean, in terms of a story sense, because... The only thing that links Transformers together, like if you want to boil it down to its essence, you have a faction of good guys and you have a faction of bad guys, preferably led by an Optimus something and a Megatron-ish something, and they fight each other, and they turn into cars and planes and stuff. Like That is the most basic element, and that has been repeated over several different universe, continuity, whatever Mm -hmm. you want to call it. So I think it's easier to accept that within the confines of a movie universe and say, okay, well, this is the same thing. This is, you know, this is a group of good guys fighting a group of bad guys, and they're different, but they're also sort of the same. Um, You know, they can change the story as they want because it's not exactly the same universe. It's a little... Well, same thing with I mean, same thing with any uh, movie uh, interpretation of a character. I mean, th- they have to make changes. It's not the same universe. I mean, uh, the 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 Avengers, the characters aren't like the characters that are pulled from the comic. It's something different. Yeah, um, I mean, but I mean, and it, but, at, but it sense, like talk about a really great movie like uh, Dark Knight Rises. And the end of the movie, everybody's like, "Oh, that's really cool," and I wanted to blow my brains out because I'm like, <laughs> "Is Batman not in Gotham City?" That is wrong. Like, I hated that more than anything I've seen in Transformers. So, you know, it, it, it can come from anywhere. It depends on how big of a fan you are. It's still a good movie, and they're still good movies. They, I think that they can be good movies without Bay. It all depends on who they get to do it, though. It, it all depends on who comes next, which I think it, I think boils it down to the, what we're really talking about, which is the issue with it is the it, it comes down to the production yeah they have the tech they have the writers they have you know everything else they need in place you know bay has set up these films in a very particular way can they find someone that has a similar vision as bay that's not going to let the the film get drawn down into a lot of heavy story and make it just about robots punching each other which is really what transformers is whether or not you like that or not that's that's why you watch it. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, that, so it, it's like you can talk about it being high art or whatever. It's not. It's, it's not. Pitch. Absolutely not. Oh God, no. Other. So you no, know, I was gonna I was gonna make the quick point, and then I thought about it, and it's I don't agree with it anymore. But the point that I was gonna make was that they've kind of trapped themselves into making Transformers the movies all about the um the visuals and the spectacle of transforming robots, but that's already faded. Because I remember by the time we were, like, watching the midnight showing of the third movie, there was no reaction to, like, the crazy visuals of Transformers transforming and giant robots yeah. walking around. I mean, during the right. first movie, we're desensitized yeah, I mean, it. there were reactions. Yeah, people were like, oh, wow, you know, that's really impressive. By the third movie, just glossed over. Yeah, like, I mean, everybody just watch, was just watch, staring watch, at the screen. find those moments. There's moments where that can happen. And that is something that Bay has done. I'll give him total props for... You know, yeah, you're right. I mean, as you've seen it, especially going into the second film, because I think we universally agree that Rise of the Fallen is an awful, awful movie. Um, There's no way to cut it. Revenge of the Fallen, yeah. uh, The the Revenge of the Fallen. Brian, that movie's so bad that the title doesn't even matter anymore. 
it yes. doesn't. It yeah. really doesn't. I mean, no. but when you get to like Dark of the Moon and that highway sequence. Where you know Bubblebee transforms and Sam goes flying midair yeah, and yeah. grabs puts it back in the car, like that is incredible. That blew my mind. Right, that's the kind so, of stuff you need to keep doing to keep the visual interest going. Correct, and that's yeah. what I think. That's one of the things that Bay can do. He can come up with those kind of visuals, even if it's just a moment, one scene out of the whole deal, where it's like this is only something that a transforming you know, entity, a robot, whatever, can do. That, that sequence is no, only possible. You mean follow up that amazing visual sequence with one that's lifted a, like, frame for frame out of one of Bay's other movies. But that doesn't matter, per se, because he's adding elements to it. I mean, yeah. he's adding uh, an entire fight sequence and stuff that wasn't there originally anyway. So, I mean, I don't mind that either. I mean, come on, it's his own stuff anyway. And it was in The Island, who saw that movie? Anybody? Yeah. Who... who no. Okay. So, so, so I, I, I want uh, a lot of times people we we t- we've talked about this in the past. A lot of times people say you know we want a fan, we want a fan, uh, like uh, with um, tra- with uh, again Avengers or anything else. Um, it was directed by a fan, but I don't think we we need a fan. We just need someone who really cares about something being consistent, coherent, and you know. You know that that has a plot and a and characterization. I think if, if we can just have someone who can like shoehorn that into the you know explosions and the and you know the spectacle of the, the you know the transforming special effects, um, I think we could probably squeeze out something pretty good that that would be that would be accessible not only to non fans but fans alike. And that's all that I want. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the worst thing that they could do is pander to fans. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know that is that is a guaranteed way to ruin a film uh, like Transformers. You know there there isn't a per, there's hardly a person that would have been less of a fan of Transformers before the movies were made than Michael Bay. I mean, and I wouldn't even say he's a Transformers fan now, but you he's know a fan of the he made <laughs> yeah, he please. made some damn fun movies to watch. Okay, maybe I'll have the second one. But he made two really good movies to watch. And, you know, and he doesn't give a crap about Transformers, you know, for the most part. I mean, he cares about it as a paycheck, and he cares about treating the property right, which is all that you need. But if you bring a fan in there, I mean, how many times have you watched a movie, read a comic, watched a TV show, there was pre-existing material that was done by a fan that screwed it up? Oh, absolutely. Awfully. I mean, like, look at uh, Nemesis. Uh, Star Trek Nemesis. That's a perfect uh, example. So, but, yeah. but no. So, what I would like is someone to maybe add something, uh, add something to the universe, add something to you know the previous movies. Like, like I said, characterization. You'd mentioned The Dark Knight Rises, but uh, The Dark Knight, you know, it's not really based on anything, but it added this new iconic vision of pre-existing characters that you know. Uh, Pan- didn't pander to the fans. It didn't pander to you know non fans. It was just something new and original that I, that most people enjoyed. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think that's where I was going originally. I, the best that we could hope for is something like that that adds something new. That well, you know, irrespective of how familiar you are with the universe, that that you can enjoy it. And then if you are a fan, you can look back and say, "Wow, that really did something we've never seen before." Hasbro has to do that in general. I mean, yes. this, this line this line is not going to succeed two, three, four more years on the backs of Optimus Primes and Bumblebees. Um, you know, it, it, this this need the entire line needs an infusion of new story, new characters. You know, something different. I mean, even Beast Wars, and like, that's why I said you need a good guy leader and you need a bad guy leader, preferably an Optimus something and preferably a Megatron something, but it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, pull in a Galvatron and an Optimus you know, something, but not Prime, you know, and make it whatever, make it something different. But, yeah, I mean, long term, we can't survive on Peterbilt trucks and Camaros as a lot and expect this line to, con- to continue to succeed for years on end. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look at the comics. They're really good, done by fans, but the main character is not Optimus Prime. The main character is main character in quotes is Bumblebee and uh Robots in the Skies, but it's not the non-speaking, you know, muscle car Bumblebee that, you know, we've all had shoved down our throats for the last 6 years, 5 years. Um 
I mean, of course that doesn't, you know, that's not designed for mass market, but it no. shows that you can do something different with the Transformers. It can be fun. It can appeal it can appeal to fans, and it doesn't have to have Optimus Prime on every single cover and, you know, blowing <clears throat> crap up in every single issue. Well, that's a I mean, I mean, there again, I think we've got kind of a special set. I mean, any medium, you know, the medium is is the thing that you're doing in a sense. With comics, you know, they're trying to ride that line between understanding that most of the people that buy Transformers comics are Transformers fans, and if anybody else is going to buy it, it's going to be comic book readers. And they should. needs to be able to bridge bridge that gap. So, yeah, comic book readers should be reading it because it's just good comic books whether or not it's Transformers. But, you know, even there again, that's something still that could, you know, deal with an infusion of new story. Uh, you know, new characters and things. And they're trying to bring in older, more obscure characters or characters that didn't get a lot of legs before. Uh, but, you know, again, w- there's only so many old characters that we've got. Well, I mean, when Transformers, are, they're, well, they're not necessarily bringing back old characters. They're bringing back old trademarks and making them characters. And there yeah. are a lot of old trademarks that they can pull out of the closet. And I, yeah. they're doing a great job. Oh, the comic's amazing. The yeah. comic is absolutely amazing. So, yeah. no, no, no problems there. You know, so far we know for sure that they are wanting to take the fourth movie in a different direction because they know retreading the same thing over and over isn't working. So, I think, you know, all we can do right now is hope that that attempt is successful, that it produces something that will strengthen the brand, sell more toys over a long period and work well enough in the theater to warrant a fifth movie that does something along the same line again. How much is Paramount controlling this, and how much is Hasbro? Seems like Hasbro is just being dragged along with mm. whatever Paramount they wants. They are to an extent. I mean, you know, I imagine Paramount has priority video power over script elements, probably visual designs too. You know, but I think... Paramount's not going to see as much return on their investment in this either from how Dark of the Moon did merchandise-wise, so it's going to be like they'll relax it a little bit and let them do something different to try to... It still made mega bucks in the theaters, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, the product, merchandising but, is a big part of it. Yeah, merchandising is, is huge on that. I mean, just look at Lucas. I mean, I think that, that proved the point that you know you don't make your money in the box office. But, I mean, Luke, that, but Lucas you know, Lucas owns Star Star Wars. Paramount doesn't own Transformers. Yeah, no, but they're getting. Every but turn. they they write those contracts well enough to get you know percentage and stuff. You know, you know Paramount stake sales. in the movie toys is why a lot of that stuff can't be reused again. Right. Okay, yeah. that, that's, so that's a good point. They that's... wet their beak a little bit. The other thing, big thing, is like licensees. Licensees yeah. will come and say, hey, the last two movies were bought for us. We didn't do any business. you got to do something, or we're not gonna, there's not going to be Transformers 4 underwear, there's not going to be Transformers hard candy, there's not going to be any of this, because the last time we did it, we didn't make anything. So I, I there's probably big pressure. I don't know if that's true, though. You can still get Dark of the Moon and, uh, rise, you know, merchandise on the shelves and it's not because it's been That's sitting no no it's no it's not because That's it's not been sitting <laughs> it's not because it's been sitting any most of the transformers merchandise non-toy merchandise that you see is based around the movies and it turns over it sells eh, i don't know it doesn't, i mean it's not it's not you know brand new so it's not selling like it did when it came out but it's good enough yeah, to sell the, the thing you have to remember with that too is that there's always going to be you know, secondary merchandise along with property X, and it's going to keep updating itself to whatever the current format of that is. So, you know, for every movie, it's going to update to that. If there was a high-profile cartoon, it would start updating to that, too. Transformers Prime isn't that show, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And every time they do a, a contract, I mean, the royalties go up, so everybody gets squeezed harder, and then they say, hey, every, you squeeze us harder, and the box office shrinks every time, so what's going on? So, uh, you know, I mean, again, there's just a lot of pressure for them to, mm-hmm. I guess, fix it, or just refresh it, just start over. You know, I think if they take Transformers 4, take it in a different direction, get, like, new designs for the merchandise because that's that's a really important thing to consider here and the toy sales still are not as strong as they want we're not going to have another transformer movie after it because there's just not enough return on it the box office numbers may be great but that's not helping everybody i am really worried i am 
very worried that if the next movie doesn't sell toys, that it might really damage the brand long term, and we might have another dormant period like we had back in the 90s. I don't know if we'll have another dormant period. We would probably have something more like the shift from G2 to Beast Wars, where the entire thing undergoes another major change to try to reinvigorate the interest. But you're right. If the next movie fails, there is very likely going to be... Uh, the brand's going to contract a lot compared to what it is now. Yeah. 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 I think well, you're I mean, again... Yeah, I mean, again, you got to realize that uh, we've already, they've already said that the budget's going to be smaller. So, you know, I'm afraid that the audience will come in with some expectation of seeing a bunch of money on the screen, and it's not quite there. So they'll have that perception that, oh, this is cheap now. It's like, you know, it's not a Michael Bay movie, and this doesn't quite look right. And then, again, all the pressure that we talked about, it essentially forces the movie to be a spectacular financial success because if it's not all the cards come crashing down because everybody's depending on it to be a billion dollar movie more or less yeah. so if it's not even if it even if the even if the box office matches the smaller budget it doesn't jive with everybody else's business model for the mo- for the movie right. yeah. so that's just really dangerous well, I mean, where as, they are right now. as far as the, as far as the budget goes if they're not as long as they're not escalating and you know trying to do crazier and crazier stuff with each movie the cost of producing the special effects goes down all of the time because except if they make new designs for four the production costs right. would go up that, because that there's is- going to be thousands and thousands of hours in modeling all that, those new characters. That is true. That is true. Yeah. So if we, we we know that they want to go in a different d- different direction, I mean, as far as story goes, do we know that they're going to go in a completely different direction as far as the models go? And if, if it's going to well, fall on continuity, how are they going to ex- explain that? that? I think you said I mean, that, right? They've said it's going to be new characters. So, I mean, at least that's my understanding. I may be wrong. But I, haven't my heard, I haven't is, heard that. I thought the way I, I heard remember that it's supposed to be did. focused on a new group of characters, right? And the implication that probably your Optimus Prime and Bumblebee will carry through, at least in like a setup sense. You know, it sounds, like, uh, sounds like sounds like the Joe movie, basically, like Retaliation. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the model they're operating under at this point. Yeah. You know, whether that follows through to the actual production, uh, I guess we'll see how much retaliation tanks. Hopefully, well, hopefully the rock will be in it. That would be awesome. If it comes out. You know, an op- another optimistic way to look at this would be that maybe they're planning for the future. You know, maybe this is they're kind of planning that this is going to be the last film, and they're trying to you know use it as a vehicle to send well, the line in a different direction, and then they'll go back to leaning on. You know, shows and and other you know, other mediums yeah. rather than well, the, thing is, the thing is too. You know, there's an extra year between Dark of the Moon and Transformers Four compared to how the pattern has gone. So you know, they're probably taking that time to really make sure that if this does well, it will kick off the next trilogy rather than try to continue it out into uh, yeah the longer. Yeah. Exactly, and you know they it may they may not plan for it to be the last movie, but you know they could just set it up so that if it ends, there's a, an end to it, like Megatron like, and the Decepticons falling into like lava, and then yeah, or know, like sinking. or like um, where they you know show everybody getting a Nebulan partner, and then um, and then yeah. Scorpion and Galvatron blasting off into the space again. We shall yeah. see Galvatron. We, we shall. shall yeah, that'd be great. Okay, uh, I think that pretty much. I, th- I think we pretty much said all that we can say about that. <laughs> well, well yes. Yeah, so reference rebirth. We're done. Yes. That's <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> Godwin's <laughs> law of Transformers. <laughs> First person to reference rebirth loses. Well, no, it's it's every, it's every discussion eventually degrades to rebirth. That's how Godwin's <laughs> law works. So uh, sweet. Okay. Well. Um, Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio. Uh, you can uh, join our Facebook fan page at uh, facebook.com slash TF Radio. You can find all of our podcasts at uh, tfradio.net or transformerspodcast.com. So, um, guys, John, you haven't been on in a while. What's mm. your Twitter handle? Uh, that John D. So, uh, that John D. And then follow us on New Soundwave, uh, new underscore Soundwave. Uh, JD. 
Uh, the JD Church. No, I just can't get JD. And um, the uh, website, the Fanboy Versus is at Fanboy VS. XV, do you have anything you want to tell the people about? My butt hurts. It does. How do you know, Brian? I can just tell. <laughs> uh, okay. Sense this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, mm. You know, com. Dot com. And uh, you can follow me uh, personally uh, at uh, at B Kilby or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Brian Kilby. Uh, Rob, There's really no point in following Brian on Twitter because he never uses it. I'm going to start. Personally. I'm going to start. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it's going okay. to be just like get the skinny. I, I, I do post to Facebook quite a bit, though, and I always post something funny. Yeah, but I didn't say anything about Facebook. I just said there's no point in following you on Twitter. Very true. Um, and, of course, um, Rob, Rob Clay is available on Twitter at uh, RAC2750, I think. And, uh, sounds right. Yeah, and at Flail Throughs. And at Flail Throughs. Flail Throughs. And uh, you can find uh, Flail Throughs at flailthroughs.blogspot.com. That's the one. Cool. Wow, it's been awesome having uh, John and JD back on this week. Yeah. That's how much longer the show oh. ended up. And it was, yeah, and I didn't want to poke my eyes out at any point throughout. So, wow. Oh, it's right. amazing. It's even more surprising. Yeah, so if someone. There were more people to uh, sort of uh, dilute XV's hate. So there, there was some personality on the show this week. Love that. Mm. I love that. Oh, did you hear that, JD? I know. Our heads. We are. We are a personality. <laughs> Perhaps we could get fo- people to follow us and do as we say, and then we could have a cult of personalities. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, we could be in living color, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, now I have to poop badly. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, that's it for this week. Uh, we we will be back next week. Thank you all for watching. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, shout out to the chat. Uh, thank you guys for being here every week. Uh, if you want to join the chat live, we uh, broadcast uh, Thursdays currently at uh, about 8, 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern uh, time. So at uh, tfrd.net slash live. Well, we start we start streaming around 8. The show starts at 8.30 that time not necessarily exactly yes roughly but you know if you show up a couple hours early you can hang out and chat and talk with diecast <laughs> we right. love you diecast so yes. uh we'll be back uh, we'll be back next week thank you guys uh catch you later this has been radio free cybertron Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Watch our live stream at tfradio.net slash live. Join our Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash tfradio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TF Radio Network. Have a question or comment? Leave it on our Facebook fan page or mail it to contact at tfradio.net. Copyright 2012 TF Radio Network.